Welcome to Savita Dental College Lecture Cast in Prosthodontics Principles of Tooth Preparation. The principles of tooth preparation are retention, resistance, structural durability, marginal integrity, and preservation of periodontium. And within that, it can be broadly grouped into mechanical, biological, and aesthetic factors. Retention and resistance form are controlled by four factors namely, taper, path of insertion, freedom of displacement, and additional retentive features. Taper should be minimum of 3 to 6 degrees, that's the ideal taper. Maximum taper allowed is 20 degrees. Common taper you usually see is around 8, 15 to 20 degrees. Freedom of displacement, a single freedom of path of insertion and displacement would give you the best retention. If you have multiple freedoms of displacement, you'll have lesser ret retention. If there is a, lots of freedoms of displacement and the arc of displacement is very wide, it can be reduced by improving additional retentive features. For example, in this crown, it can easily get displaced, but adding a proximal groove will make it very difficult for the crown to get displaced. So a proximal groove or a proximal box are the most common retentive features. You can also use pin retained restrictions, but grooves are better in the sense you will have more surface area and you can place multiple grooves in a single tooth preparation. For structural durability, you need adequate width of the restriction. All metal restrictions require at least 0.7 mm width and metal ceramic require at least 1.5 mm width and all ceramic requires 2 mm of adequate width. Whenever you have a functional cusp bevel, that is where the functional cusp will uh, up, be opposing the, you are expecting the maximum amount of load under the functional cusp. So you'll need to have an additional 1.5 mm reduction for the functional cusp bevel. Non-functional cusp bevel, you can have a 0.5 mm reduction. For offsets that is in the center of the occlusal groove, you want to have an occlusal offset which will look like a very shallow classroom cavity of 0.5 or 1 millimeter depth. Marginal integrity is obtained by and preservation of periodontium go hand in hand. Marginal integrity we can do it by the choice of uh, margins and uh, periodontium you want to have a supragingeal or a subgingeal margin. So when your ginger Restoration margin is below the level of the gingiva, it's called a subgingival margin. And the problem with this is that it is very difficult to maintain and the periodontal health may be compromised. But it is very aesthetic to look at. And the supragingival margins, on the other hand, the margins are above the level of the gingiva, they're very easy to clean, but they don't look aesthetic. So posteriorly, we give supragingival, anterior labial surface alone, we give subgingival. As far as the finish line configuration goes, chamfer finish lines are preferred for all metal restorations. You can give knife edge when you have limited tooth structure and it has a it abruptly ends in a sharp tip. Feather edge is a long thin sharp tip margin which is given when you have even less tooth, prepare, tooth structure available. Usually it is given for lower premolars which already have a 9 degree lingual tilt. Sloping shoulders are given when you have in the labial surface of canines because for all ceramic restrictions. Shoulders are given whenever there is ceramic. Ceramic should always end in a 90 degree margin. Shoulder with bevel is given when you are giving a metal ceramic restoration and you want the metal to very well burnish to the margins of the tooth. But when you are using shoulder with bevel, you will have to go with the subgingival margin. So here you can see that uh, that's how the bevel would look. And in cross section, you also notice that the bevel is thinner in the sloping area and it's wider in the flat area. So you will have better adaptation when you use a bevel. If unsupported enamel is left around the tooth, it's called lipping. This should be avoided during tooth preparation. Next is steps in tooth prep. This is the armamentarium required for tooth preparation. A round bear to put your depth orientation grooves and potholes. Then you connect them with your straight fissure burr. And you have the torpedo diamond in L yellow bands. That is for giving you a nice chamfer finish and the thin uh, tapering diamond is for breaking the contacts. So this is how a depth orientation groove would appear. You want to follow the shapes of your contour of the tooth. For the labial side, you also want to make sure that is adequate uh, depth orientation groove so that you don't do uneven reduction. When you're doing a pro contact breaking, you should use a thin tapering diamond a little bit away from the contact, cut down the enamel, and then once you have unsupported enamel, you should chisel it off with a straight chisel or a hatchet. A final finish preparation will have a smooth chamfer margin as you can see here. Very parallel axial walls and a nice functional cusp bevel. In this case, it's an upper, so the functional cusp is a palatal. And a non-functional cusp bevel, which is very thin. You can also see the corrugated surface of the uh, occlusal surface, 
where you see the basic cuspal shape is there but you don't have any of the fine grooves in the cusp. When you are using a metal ceramic restoration where only ceramic is to be on a facing side and you are having metal on the lingual side, wherever metal comes you keep a chamfer margin and wherever there is uh, ceramic we give a shoulder or a shoulder margin. The point where the chamfer and shoulder margins meet is called the wing preparation. When we do partial veneer crowns, that is where you want to keep the buccal surface unprepared, on the lingual surface you do the preparation. These crowns are 99% made only of full metal and uh, they have two proximal grooves to hold the crown in place and to have better retention. The point where the proximal groove meets the facial surface is called the proximal flare and it should be 90 degrees. A 7 8 crown is similar to a 3 4 crown in that it's only one half of the buccal surface is prepared that is for wide smile line only to see the uh, molar only the mesio labial side of the molar so these this, uh, again it will have two proximal grooves it will be connected up by a occlusal offset uh, so these are the basic preparation and the designs for a tooth preparation however details are given in the notes and there's a very important essay so please study thoroughly